Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers to this channel. I really, really appreciate it. I thought that there'd only really be my mother watching. Hi mum. Uh, but it's really nice that there are some more people <laughs> interested in what I'm doing. So today I'm going to be making some giant faux postal stamps that are supposed to double up as journaling spots. And when I say giant, folks, I mean in comparison to this. Okay, I'm in comparison to an actual postage stamp. They're not giant as in, you know, a giant could use them. So um, we've got some cardstock here that was just in the back of one of those do not bend envelopes. Um, and I'm using, I'm going to link to the video um, of this YouTuber that inspired me with their vintage stamps. Of course, the name completely escapes me right now. Uh, but I will link to the video below and I'll tag them when I post this video because their style is is kind of what is inspiring this aesthetic that I'm going to create today. Um, and all I'm doing really is I'm, I'm upscaling the size of the stamps so that they can be used as journaling spots. First thing I'm going to do is, um, so I started off with an eight and a half by six piece of card and roughly cut them into. That was it. And now I'm going to quickly cover them in brown paper bag. And yes, of course, I'm going to speed this bad bit up because you've seen someone cover cardstock with brown paper bag before. First lesson learned. <laughs> I don't have a prototype this is just I've done a bit of prep that's it if you're going to use bright green glue then you should probably use thicker paper because otherwise it will show through so um it doesn't throw show through the sandwich bag that I used and it doesn't show through the front of the envelope that I used so that's just an FYI. So that's one thing learned. I'm not worried about this because thankfully the key to this project is going to be layering. So almost all of this is going to be covered and I'm going to trim around the edge to give that uh, kind of perforated stamp look with my pinking shears. So there's really not going to be much green left on show. There might be a bit. Hey ho, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, the next thing is you need to think before you do anything else need to think about your layers. Now in the video that I watched, um, we had some layers of black, which I thought looked really good. When I'm cutting these, I didn't measure, it's probably obvious I didn't measure. When I'm cutting these for the first layer, I need to bear in mind that I'm going to cut a wavy line all around the edge here. So this is going to sh this is going to shrink the border around. It's going to shrink considerably. So I definitely need to leave a good chunk of space around that black first layer. And then in this uh, next layer, um, book page was used, I think, in the video that I watched. And I just got this dream diary. It was um, seventy nine pence from a thrift store, and it had been reduced and reduced and reduced, and I could just see where it was heading. It was heading to landfill or to recycling at the very best. So I decided to rescue it, and that's going to be my third layer. I'll just show you how I'm going to put it together, and before I do glue it all together and show you the final result, and then I'm going to get on with some stamping and some oh, painting and all kinds of things to to jazz it up. A bit of washy as well. But I've got these images from a children's dictionary, yet another charity shop book that was a thrift store book, you know what I mean, that was looking as though it was about to um, be thrown in the bin. So it's a lovely sunflower image. I've got some washi tape I could put behind it before I glue it down. So I'm going to put this together. Uh, before I do that, however, I'll just show you how I cut these bits without actually properly measuring it. Because uh, what do we want to avoid? Measuring. <laughs> when do we want to avoid it? Now. <laughs> so for these, because I wanted to get them roughly the uh, right size. First of all, I took a piece of, I, I don't know how long I've had this flat paper, by the way, probably about a decade. I've had it since I worked in school. So I used to use it in projects for my students. Uh, you know, creative projects, and I was left over with a stock of it, and I thought I'll definitely use that. 
uh, but I haven't. So I'm going to go to the next one because that's probably the one that I'm going to use this on. And I'm going to remember that I'm going to level up like this. Just if it helps when I'm in frame. Level up like this. I'm going to remember that however much is left here, it will be half that amount because it's going to sit in the centre. Okay. So I probably want a good chunk. About half of that around the border would be good for me. I'm going to flip it over. This is all to avoid measuring. You can just measure it. <laughs> I just hate measuring. And then if I just trim along there and along there, and then if I cut this in half, because this is for two, I folded it in half. Okay, so we'll just. Okay. And then when I put it down, it's roughly the right size. And again, remembering that I'm going to trim around the edges here, so it's going to get even shorter, this border. So that is about the right size for what I'm going to do with this. And then when I come to do my book page, the next layer, I'm doing exactly the same technique. I'm looking for a page that's quite text heavy. Uh, it doesn't matter too much, actually. I'm slightly overthinking that. But there we go. We'll just take this one and then tearing that out. It's the same technique. First of all, I'm going to cut round all the white space because I don't want any of that on. Okay. And then again, I'm going to position it like I did, remembering that the space that I leave here, it's going to be about half that amount. because It's going to sit in the center. Okay. I'm going to push it over. It's going to be equal all the way around. So I'm going to just uh, say that about half of that would be perfectly fine. Flip it over and just trim off the edges. And all these scraps will go into my scraps box and they will get used for something else, probably a snippet roll or some such. Okay, maybe a collage. And then when I turn it over, that is about the right size. So I've got it layered up quite easy. And I didn't have to do any measuring. <laughs> which is basically the thing I spend avoiding. Right, let me try collaging the first one. forgotten my sponge to um, do the <laughs> inking properly um, I'm gonna nip and get that in a second it's looking uh, looking quite nice overall and this really is only the beginning bit this is really just the start of the project this was just a stray piece of washi tape off this roll which I think I got from the washi top shop it's absolutely gorgeous um, a mixture of text and, and flowers on a sort of vintage tea dyed color I use it often um, and other than that, just a tiny little strip of washi tape there. Um, just a little floral motif, uh, just to go with the other floral things that are going on in the in the design. But I do think that looks really nice already, and I haven't even actually started with any embellishment. It does look slightly off centre because of the way I've cut it. It's not my sticking; it is the cutting around. So um, yeah. <laughs> It's a handmade object, but that's okay. Um, so let's see about some stamps to begin with. Let's do some postmark stamps. <laughs> Really, really lovely. Now, obviously, 
ink stamps do not have um, watercolour on them usually <laughs> but I just really like watercolour and like working with it so I'm probably going to just use a bit of metallic watercolour just because I feel like it it's obviously not very realistic I'm not really too worried about that at the end of the day I think it's an impressionistic idea of a postal stamp so I think anyone looking at it would sort of get what it was imitating um let's go for some i've got this uh this set of watercolors here Um, i think i'm actually i'm going to go for a little bit of red because my pink isn't really showing through as much so i'm going to be bold and go for red so first thing i have to do is firstly pick up the correct brush that helps and then start creating a well in this red uh, I don't know if you've watched any watercolour videos, but they do recommend that you get lots of water in your pigment. And make it basically a bit of a well. It probably will spatter into other colours when you're doing this. It's just part of the gig, unfortunately. Um, that'll dry off. Okay, and then we're just going to do some spatterings. Lovely. So that's going to be set aside to dry. The watercolour will not take very long, thankfully, so it'll be dry fairly quickly. I think we've got time to do one more. Uh, I don't want to uh, keep this video going too long, but let me just get my layers assembled. Right, it was definitely necessary to have a bit of a tidy off camera there. So this is the one, uh, this is the other side of the envelope. So you get to this point and all of its reclaimed materials. You could actually use any paper you have in your stash to lay this up. I had some wallpaper sitting to the side here that I thought, hoped I would get round to, but if I start doing every possible incarnation of this, of course, we'll be here for the rest of time. So I'm just letting you know that I'm following that particular style from the YouTube video I mentioned. I love it. Um, it looks wonderful, um, but there are lots and lots of things that you can do that are not that so just letting you know just use what you have if you don't have access why would you to a children's dictionary <laughs> an illustrated children's dictionary to get photographs like this and you maybe don't have any stamps like this which is what i'm going to demonstrate next you could literally cut the characters off a cereal box and put them in the middle and embellish from there and make them a postage stamp so you could cut a magazine image out it's just anything you want a junk mail image out there's just whatever you want okay so i'm going to stamp and paint and then i'm going to make that the focal point and then i'm going to add some more stamping like i did last time once the um <laughs> once the paint has dried and in retrospect it would have been more sensible to do these the other way around so that this could have uh, dried whilst I was making the other one you see I just don't really have that thing that tells you what order to do things in side whilst I compose the rest of the card so we'll put that to one side and I'll quickly glue together all the other pieces that I'm going to use okay I'm bringing this back into the frame it's now dry even though I did use a bit too much water I'm not a professional watercolor artist as you may have noticed um so you know i'm gonna make mistakes 
that's just the way of it. I'm just bringing in my Sharpie here and see if there's anywhere I'd like to um, just gently re-outline what perhaps where I've gone over or where it didn't first imprint. I'm not going to go overboard, just making a couple of subtle little marks, maybe at the centre of these flowers where I've just sort of lost the, with the watercolour paint I've been doing, lost the sort of centre of the flower. Maybe here where I just accidentally dotted some paint, I'll put a, a circle in the middle of that to make it look like a little flower. Could even draw a little stem down there. Okay, so just to sort of show you that it's okay to do touch-ups afterwards and it looks quite cute. So I am going to glue this down and then we're going to do a few more embellishments like we did with the other one. So I'll quickly get this glued down and I'll just speed it up. And just for comparison, I decided to ink this one. This what in the original video the, the edges were inked, you know, this bit of book page here. And I think having tried both, I probably do prefer the ink the inked version, but I would say it's quite subtle. So either way it's fine. If I wanted to, I could go around with a pen on this sunflower and make a little border. Okay, let's get this baby finished off. I'm actually thinking for this, I want to do something with a bit of fabric or lace, because why not? It's not a real postage stamp. <laughs> it's a junk journal postage stamp, so I can do whatever I want, even though, of course, something like this would never appear on a real postage stamp. Um, I do really like this. I wonder if I might even get it sitting in that lower border there. Quite like that. So where's my fabric glue? Oh, let's see if this will play ball. I kind of like the way that interrupts the black border. For this I also, so I have this tape that's brown matte tape. I got it at a, um, <clears throat> a shop that sold kind of local art and a few art supplies. I'm sure you could find something similar online. It doesn't have a brand on it or anything but it is a lot like washi tape but just plain brown tape and I tried stamping it with the airmail stamp and it came out really nice. What I'm not sure of is if I really want something this big maybe across the edge like that but I think what I want to do is tear Okay, that took a bit of repositioning, but uh, we're getting there. So I think that looks really cute. But I did need to tear it down from its original size. Let's do a couple of other stamps. Yeah, really am enjoying that. And I would like to do some of my spatters, <laughs> even though they're not on real post stamps, I don't care. <laughs> I want to do some spatters. I'm going to do some blue spatters this time. So I'll quickly speed up that process. So these are both floral designs, which wasn't actually my intention. It's just the way it's worked out. And I'm really pleased with how both of them have turned out. And I will definitely put them in my journal to use as journaling spots. Got a writing space on the back. If I wanted to, I could also jazz at the back with a postage theme, which I may well do. Okay, I think I've made enough uh, mess with the ink. <laughs> Look at the state of that. I've stamped myself <laughs> with the airmail stamp. <clears throat> I need to go and um, clear up because my mother could be watching this and uh, she would not approve. So thank you for watching and I hope this was inspiring and that you feel better about the fact you do not make as much mess as I do with the ink. I will look forward to seeing you next time.